Alright guys, welcome to your 28th UDK tutorial, and actually this is the last tutorial where I'm going to be covering materials for now. And in this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be covering the specular control of a material. In other words, how to control the shininess of a material. And it's going to be awesome, so, well, stay tuned. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to be adding three textures. So go ahead and remember our shortcut. Hold down T on your keyboard and click three times. One two, three. Now one of them is going to be plugging into the diffuse, one of them is going to be plugging into the specular, and the last one is just going to be a normal map. So go ahead and I already know what textures I want to use. So go ahead and clear everything out. And we're going to be searching for something called ceramic. Now go ahead and might as well search textures and check it out. I want to use this cool lion's face texture. I think that looks pretty cool. And you can see by the last letter the D symbolizes the diffuse, the N symbolizes the one we're going to be plugging in the normal map, and the SM symbolizes specular map. That is a map that basically controls which areas of the map should be shiny. So let me go ahead and grab my textures, and I want to associate this one with the diffuse. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking the arrow right there. I'll just plug that in right now. I'll associate this one with the normal map, so go ahead and do that right now. And I want to associate this one with a specular map, so go ahead and do that right there. So like I was saying before, let me go ahead and get this set up, and we can go ahead and expand this. We're done with that for now. So like I said before, the specular map is basically a map that shows which areas should be shiny. So basically you have a map that consists of black, white, and gray. The black spots say, alright, I don't want those spots to be shiny at all. The white spots are basically the glossy spots. Those are the spots that should be really shiny. So as you can see, kind of the top strip right here, that has, since that's kind of gray on our map, that's going to be shiny. This area right here is going to be really shiny. And this part right here, this kind of brown area, since it's totally black on our map, as you can see, that part's not going to be shiny at all. It's going to be dull. So that's what a specular map is. So let's go ahead and if we go ahead and unplug this, we can see that we lose a little bit of the shine, but it's really not shining as much as we like it to. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and boost the shininess by multiplying it by a value. Now we're already familiar with this and we actually know a shortcut to do that. Go ahead and hold M on your keyboard and click wherever you want that multiply box to pop up. So now let's go ahead and plug in your specular mass to A and we of course need another value to multiply it by. So we can just go ahead and add a constant by having new constant and let's go ahead and plug this in right now so we don't forget and for the constants value I'm going to pick something like 150. That should be a pretty good value. So now if I go ahead and plug this into specular, check it out. Our object is now incredibly awesomely shiny. So let me go ahead and rotate this so we can see. Maybe that's a better view. So now you can see, hmm, I want to get a real good view here. Well, I guess the light's coming from that direction. So basically you can see that the gray areas, which is the top strip and especially this face, is really glossy. In those areas such as this brown area right here isn't really glossy because that was the part that was black on our specular map. So as you can see, check out the difference whenever I disconnect it. That is our map by default. It kind of looks like a plain block of cement with some blue paint painted on. And now by adding the specular attribute, we can get some definite boost and shiny. It kind of turns into like a metal block rather than, you know, just a cement one. So aside from that, what we can do is we can further control the specularity or the shininess control by adding another attribute to the specular power. So that being said, let me give you guys another tip. If you hold down control and alt on your keyboard and drag, you get a box around your selected items and that way you can go ahead and you can actually group them into group which I don't want to do now I just want to move them to the side over here pretty cool huh so now what I want to do is I want to mess with the specular control a little bit so this specular control just takes a constant number so let me go ahead and right click constant new constant and go ahead and plug this in right now and by default here's how it works 
low numbers give you a big shininess area. It's kind of like if you were to shine a big lamp on it, the whole area would be lit. And zero is a pretty low number, so that's why this whole entire area is lit. Big numbers, such as like 500, give you a really specific small shininess area. It's kind of like shining a small flashlight or laser. So a big area like zero gives you a big area. A small number like 200 gives you a very specific area just like that. You see what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and give it something like, put it somewhere in the middle like four. And this kind of lights up our area. Mm, I want to give it even bigger. Let's say 20. Pretty good median. So check it out. So with controlling the specular attribute and the specular property, you pretty much have all the control you would ever want over the shininess or glossiness of your material. So that's all I had talking with you guys about in this tutorial. Let me think if I'm forgetting anything. Nope, I think that's pretty much it. So that's how you control the shininess of your material. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget, if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask me on my forum because I rarely look at my YouTube comments. I'm sorry to admit that. So anyways, talk to me on my forum, and I'll be happy to chat with you. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.